The UK's intelligence services, so we're talking about spies, whatever it is, MO5, MI6, have put out a new advert for interns and they are trying to encourage underrepresented groups to apply. But it has led to what? A backlash, right? And it leads into our debate this morning. We're asking, has the focus on diversity gone too far? Because uh, we've got in the studio Amy Nicole Turner and Alby Amancona uh, to discuss all, all of this. So, Alby, you think it has gone too far? Yes, I think in this instance, the way that these organisations are trying to improve the diversity of their workforce is totally wrong. I think it's perfectly fine for organisations to be encouraging people from so-called underrepresented groups to be applying for certain jobs. I think that's completely fine. No one can really argue with that. But when it gets to a point where you are saying only this group of people can apply and this group of people, mostly white men, do not apply, I think that is totally wrong. I mean, we've managed to get to a situation in this country where in the criterion of some of these job adverts, you would be thinking that a, a, a white working class boy from a single parent household was privileged and the son of an, of an African oil baron who had exactly. gone to Eton is, is not privileged yeah. and that is completely nonsense. I mean, we, we see it sometimes in this industry uh, and exactly that scenario where by white people have been, you know, overlooked by very privileged people from backgrounds because it ticks a diversity box. But actually, if you look at their own personal privilege, you could probably argue that the oil baron's son or the prince's son has probably had more privilege during their lives. Do you not take umbrage at being told white people need not apply? No, because that, this is an example of one uh, internship. Now, it's important that is an internship because with anything... Positive discrimination is illegal in this country, and we're talking about positive action, where What's the, the candidates, where the candidates are of equal merit. It is targeted and it is proportionate at addressing the underrepresentation of a certain group. So within the um, special intelligence services, there are there is plenty of reports to show that there are, there are certain groups that are underrepresented, right? So to address that, they've gone in right at the root and they've offered an internship to to the underrepresented group. This is only one internship. There's plenty of others um, available on their website, but this is just a targeted, proportionate response to offer equal opportunities, just to level out the playing field. Not many women in car want. mechanics, though. Should we say men need not apply? You know, only women should apply to it's, become it's, car mechanics to balance out the discrimination between the genders. And, you know, it just where do you draw the line in all of this? Why doesn't it go on merit? It I mean, does. It should be on merit, really, Amy. And the it example is. that you just used there, where it's just an internship levelling the playing field, is wrong. Because in that scenario which I said to you earlier on, the son of a Nigerian oil baron who had gone to Eton is encouraged to apply for this internship. But then the, the son of a single-parent household, a white single-parent household on the English coast is not Well, that's, seen, that's completely wrong, because, because this internship was for um, socio-economically deprived... BAME candidates, and there are plenty of other ones on offer for everyone else, for the working class single parent that you mentioned. Now, so they're two different internships. But the important thing to remember is that in any job where you where there's positive action involved, so say if you had a primary school and all of the teachers were women, and then you had two candidates and you would pick... They're, and they're of completely equal merit, completely equal merit, mm -hmm. that's the key, mm -hmm. then you probably pick a woman to even out the workforce. No, we... Uh, I'm we'll probably a pick man. a man, yeah, sorry, sure, sorry. Sure, sure. Yeah, you'd probably pick a man. If it was, uh, it was, it was at the final, uh, final post and it was a tiebreaker situation and you've got a, a female workforce, you'd pick a man at that point. And that's, that's where this type of intervention is welcome and is... And it's probably why, um, so say the intelligence services... They have been commended for their social mobility because they've had schemes like this for the past, like, five years, and they've worked out really well. Um, so it's been proven to work, and I think that's why they're offering this internship again. Mm -hmm. Well, I just had an email in uh, from Stick Delaney. I, I just saw the advert on TV for GCHQ. I worked for GCHQ for 32 years, and this is one of the reasons I left. Diversity came before national security, and that cannot be the case. Um, I, extraordinary claim from him. 
Look, I think this viewer is totally right, and I think a lot of people who will see adverts like those will feel exactly the same way. I mean, if we look at the other example which has inspired this talking point this morning, the BT um, job scheme, where they're looking to hire people from cities because they're more diverse over rural communities, I just think that is absolutely absurd. You know, I was reading in The Times last week that if you live within a commutable distance of London, Birmingham or Manchester, and you're from any socioeconomic background, you are more likely to earn more money in your lifetime. So you are already at an advantaged position if you live within a commutable distance of a major city in this country. Yeah. And for BT, the country's biggest telecom provider, yeah. to say, yeah. we're going to hire from cities, not from rural areas, it's absolutely appalling. It is appalling because the opportunities for people in rural areas are much, much less uh, as well.